Sometimes people be on the waiting list for like 10 years. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Aaliyah J. And make sure you subscribe down below. First things first. So today I am getting into a new series. Um, so <laughs> it's about to be a thing. <laughs> So as a lot of you know, I have really been into fashion lately. I've been really wanting to get deep into the fashion world as far as like history, even working with fashion brands. So a couple of days ago, I started posting fashion facts on my stories and you guys have been loving it. Make sure you follow me at Aaliyah J. Um, that's my TikTok name, my Instagram name, and my Twitter handle. But yeah, I started posting some fashion facts on my stories and you guys were like really in love with it and you just, been loving the fashion content that I've been posting lately. So I'm like, you know what? How about I bring this whole thing, make it a series, and put it on my YouTube? So we can talk about all the fashion facts, all the latest trends, all of the brands that we love, or even brands that we don't love. We're gonna talk about it all. I thought that I'd start a fashion series, and I actually need a name for it. I don't have any names in mind. Um, I need you guys help, so please comment down below because I really need help. I just want to say that in this fashion series that I want to do, I'm going to be covering all brands, especially brands that um, have a really, really, really long history, like brands that were built back in the 1800s. There's a lot of new brands that were built roughly 10 years ago, probably uh, less than that, and they don't have much history. Sometimes it takes years to build like history for brands, of course. So if you ever see a brand that I'm not probably covering, it's probably because it doesn't have much to really talk about. So I thought I'd do this while I do my makeup because I know you guys still love when I do my makeup, so I thought I'd combine both. So I already did my brows. So today we're gonna be talking about Hermes. So as we all know, Hermes is a super duper trendy, 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 fashion brand. In the past two or three years, Hermes has become super duper popular in the pop and hip hop culture. Um, of course, it's been popular before that, of course, but we're just gonna state the facts. Pop and hip hop culture definitely makes trends a little more trendy and put it on the front line. I thought that it'll be great to talk about Hermes, especially since I just got a new one. I thought this brand would be perfect to talk about because it's been a topic of discussion. Um, the value has went up because there's so many and people want so many. And I think it's something that a lot of people do want to know the history on. You know, sometimes we buy brands and we don't really know the history on where it came from, how it was made, who owns the company, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not gonna be doing any like extraordinary makeup. I'm gonna be doing my regular makeup just because I'm gonna be taking some pictures today so I kinda just wanna look normal. I don't, I have not been feeling eyeshadow lately, y'all. I have Eyeshadow is not for me right now, okay? So this is how Hermes all started. A French man named Thierry Hermes was born in Kerflin, is it Kerflin or Kreflin? Kreflin, Germany? I don't know, oh, Kreffeld? Okay, <laughs> so I might not pronounce things the right way, okay? <laughs> so we're just gonna excuse that. And he was born on January 10th, 1801. That was like hella long ago, bro. So of his two parents, he was one of the six children. There's not many history facts on theory because it was so long ago, the internet was not created. Like literally that was like, mad long ago. The internet wasn't created and people probably didn't document this stuff back then. There's not many facts out there about him and his life was very discreet. So one fact I do know is that he lost his entire family to disease and war. It's like so crazy because like life back then and life now was just so different. We have hospitals, we have medicine, we have vaccines, we have all types of stuff. Back then they did not have that. Like if they got sick, it was over. Like literally done. After losing, this, after losing his entire family, he decided to pack his bags and move to Paris. Now, before he lost his family, him and his family did work in leather shops. They did know how to customize leathers. Back then, um, in the 1800s, you know, customizing leather and making leather was super duper popular. Um, that was something that they really needed because they needed to ride horses, they needed saddles. Any fashion house that's built back in the day, like 1800s, it always starts with leather. 
leather all the time. So he really used that gift of knowing how to work with leather and he opened up a saddle and harness shop in 1837. And this was the year that the Hermes brand was created and born. So the brand first started out as leather for harnesses and saddles for horses because that was their form of transportation. Um, they didn't have cars back then, all they had was horses and boats. Um, which makes sense because if you think about the logo of Hermes, it's literally a horse. So Theory married a woman named Christine Petronel Periart and they had one son together. Their son, they named him Charles Emil. So as I said, there's not much history on Theory, there's not much history on Christine, but there is some history on Charles Emil. So Charles, Theory's son, he had two children. They were both males and their name was Adolf and Emil. So basically Charles named his son after him and had another son named Adolf. Adolf was like a popular name back then, I see. Once Adolf and Emil grew up, they um, decided to help the brand, the Hermes brand, because that was their last name, of course. So they would just inherit it into helping the brand grow and, you know, being a part of the brand. They worked overtime and they were young adults at this time when they decided to help the brand expand to other places and get other clientele in Russia, North Africa, Europe. Of course, they was already in Europe, but but even in Asia and America. Back then it wasn't too many brands where you can go for luxury leathers and this is how the brand started to expand to elite clientele. So when I say elite, they catered to like princesses, the royalty, they catered to the emperor and his wife. Now I also want to be clear that the brand also started to expand because they did open up a store and they opened up this store on a super popular street. So this is a street in Paris, France where the Hermes store still resides to this day this is the flagship store this is the actual store where the actual man who created Hermes brand um, decided he wanted his store now Adolf who was Charles's son which is Theory's grandson um, he decided to leave the company because he felt like the brand wasn't going anywhere which is actually crazy I guess they was kind of like on a standstill with just like their own kind of clientele their elite list probably felt like okay that's it what are we doing but he really didn't feel like the brand was going anywhere he didn't see a future in the brand which is crazy to even think I mean I know he was family but damn like people people don't be having no faith in you bro like but he did have a reason to think like this so by this time it was the 1900s and Adolf didn't feel like the brand was going to go anywhere because they created saddles and harnesses and in the 1900s they was getting out of that they was creating cars they was about to start creating cars and he was just like you know what are we gonna do like this doesn't have any future the era of carriages was really coming to the end so he was just like I'm out so even though Adolf decided to leave the company and he was just like y'all ain't really on Emil decided to prove his brother wrong and and he decided to start making trunks which is basically uh, big leather luggages like you guys probably seen them in like movies even if you go into the stores you'll probably see like vintage trunks in the store on display as like part of their um, decor he stopped making saddles and harnesses and started to make trunks so that people can carry luggage into their vehicles or whatever they use to travel their ships their boats I'm not sure if airplanes were created back then I really I think I mean of course probably right I don't know now one of the bad that was created back then in the 1900s one of the bags that Emil decided to create I really don't know how to pronounce it you guys um it's I don't know French you know you have to have some type of like oui, oui. Givenchy. <laughs> you gotta have some type of like accent I don't have that so I'm not gonna fake it I'm not gonna try and look crazy so I'm just gonna be honest I don't know how to pronounce it but yeah so this bag I'm gonna just put the bag here this bag looks like a Birkin, but it is not a Birkin, okay? So this bag was made in the 1900s, and it was specifically made for riders who still, you know, rode uh, horses and carriages. Um, but, you know, whoever needed to carry stuff, they can use it. This is also the era where no one was really riding horses anymore. No one was taking carriages. Everyone was now using vehicles. So because, so because no one was really using carriages, and that was their specialty, 
this introduced Emil to a whole new era of clothing. And other business owners like Coco Chanel, she wanted to learn how to make clothes as well by Emil because he was so ahead of his times and his quality was so amazing. This was around 1920 and he decided to start adding more clothing and adding more accessories and he was being very consistent. There's not much history about Emil's personal life but we do have a lot of information about his business life and the business going forward. So by this time Emil already had children who were married. Like I feel like time is flying by what is happening <laughs> so he had so he had three children he also had three son-in-laws so these three son-in-laws he groomed them to be a part of the business and to help with the Hermes company so i want you guys to keep that in mind keep that in the back of your head okay now in in 1922 the first leather handbags of Hermes was introduced don't be confused with the other bag the hot something something bag that bag was luggage so now around this era handbags were introduced this was bags that women can carry they can carry on the street put their stuff in put their oh they didn't have phones i was about to say phone <laughs> um they could put their lipstick in um i don't know what else they would have so this handbag was created because emil's wife complained about not being able to find a handbag of her liking that fit her style or even fit the stuff that she wanted to put in it. So Emil took it so Emil took it upon himself to create this handbag collection. I if that's not goals, I don't know what it is. Like my boyfriend better be somewhere right now creating me a handbag cuz he ain't even called me back, okay? So I'm I'm a I'm a wait for my handbag now in the 1930s a whole decade later Hermes introduced a whole collection of bags that are recognizable till today and are super duper legendary in the Hermes company for example this bag was created in 1935 and is now renamed the Kelly Hermes bag but we're gonna get into that later so just stay put okay so around this time the 1930s Hermes decided to expand itself and they found themselves in department stores like Neiman Marcus in New York and the brand decided to grow like crazy. However, in 1949, a whole nother decade later, it withdrew from department stores. It's not said why, of course, because that's business. I mean, I could only guess is that I guess it just wasn't doing well. Sometimes when you are a brand and you put yourself in stores, you really just pay for shelf space. You're not really profiting. Um, times are very different from now and then, so who really knows, you know? So sadly Emil died there is no history on how and why but in 1951 his son-in-laws that he groomed to work for the Hermes company they decided to fully take over the Hermes company their names were Robert Dumas and Jean Rene Gurand so Robert Dumas which was the son-in-law of Emil he became he became the first person to lead the Hermes brand who wasn't a relative of the family his only connection to the Hermes family was through marriage would opted him to change his name to Robert Dumez Hermes, which is tough, okay? <laughs> so while Robert ran the brand, um, a very famous actress named Grace Kelly was spotted out with one of their popular bags, which is the sack bag, and she wore this bag religiously. She was pregnant at the time, and she decided to use this bag to cover up her baby bump from paparazzi. And this is when the public began to call the sack bag the Kelly bag. The sack Hermes bag became so, so, so popular that Hermes decided to rename the entire bag to be named the Kelly bag. As of today, the Kelly bag is one of the most popular Hermes bags in the company. So a lot of people know this story on how the Birkin bag also got its name. But if you don't know, I'm gonna tell you right now. Now in 1964, Jean Louise Dumas Hermes, which is the son of Robert Dumas Hermes, the one that changed his name to be Hermes, Jean decided to join the Hermes company of course, like who the hell wouldn't, he decided to join the franchise to continue the legacy of his great great grandfather, Thierry Hermes. And quite quickly, he became the CEO of the Hermes company, and he was he was also the artistic director. So one day, Jean decided to take a plane. There was a woman who was also on the plane with him, who was a famous actress, and her name was Jane Birkin. She so while they was on a plane, she was trying to fit all her carry-on items into a straw tote. Um, you know. 
something like a tote of what you would wear on the beach she has plenty of pictures actually in this tote and this is what it looks like um so she was trying to fit all of her items in one of these totes and she was also trying to put the tote in the overhead bin and everything literally fell out of the bag on the floor literally went everywhere i mean of course if your bag is made of straws like you know so supposedly jane started to go on a rant about how she was so sick of handbags nowadays and she wished she could just find a bag that fit her type and can carry all of her stuff in it and wouldn't break apart and that's when jean was like aha I got it. Jean became super inspired by her rant and decided to say, you know what? I should make a bag that fits everything and, and purposeful for the modern woman. This gave him the idea that Jane probably wasn't the only woman who was going through this, you know? If you think about it, one of the bags in the Hermes company was created because his grandfather made it for his grandmother because of the same issue. He then invited Jane Birkin to collaborate with the Hermes brand to create a bag that she thinks would be amazing to carry all her stuff in that other women would love. So in a 2012 interview, Jane said that she specifically requested a bag with a lot of pockets. She said that she started to actually draw her inspiration on a airplane disposable sickness bag of what she thinks that the Jane Birkin Times Hermes bag would look like. Four years later, the Hermes Birkin bag was born and the rest is history. So a lot of people do get the Birkin and the Kelly bag mixed up. It, they are two different bags. Some people think that it's called a Kelly if it's smaller and a Birkin if it's bigger, which is actually false. The Kelly bag was designed more for an upscale luxury look. That's why it has one handle while the Birkin is geared to the everyday it girl. So the difference between a Kelly and a Birkin bag is immediately evident. Um, the Kelly bag has one handle while the Birkin bag has two handles. Kelly bag has one handle with a strap that you can wear as a crossbody and the Birkin bag has two handles with no strap. So the Hermes company said that the Kelly bag has the shoulder strap because it's supposed to provide a more mature and elegant look while the Birkin bag is more of a laid back bag used for every day it's meant to be carried in the cook of your arm. Now another difference between the Kelly and the Birkin bag. The Kelly bag requires the flap to be closed when you carry it um, because if you don't carry it it puts more strength on the handle because it only has one handle. Handle. As the Birkin bag, you can wear it with the flap open and the lock undone. Now we all know that these bags are super hard to come by nowadays, especially since Hermes likes to keep their clientele very elite, like how they started back in the 1800s. They want only certain access from um, to be to certain clients. And as of as of right now, it's actually even hard for um, the elites to even get their hands on because they're so popular and only a few are made each year. So they only make so they do only make a few bags each year but to every clientele you have to be offered the bag and you're only offered two bags a year now hair and that can be super discouraging but the popular way right now to get any Hermes bag is through consignment or a reseller sometimes that's the only way you could get those and even the elites go through consignment. Um, but I will tell you the other ways. You have to build up reputation with the brand and with your salesperson. So if your saleswoman knows that you're looking for a bag, you would definitely say that, but you definitely have to be loyal to the company. So the brand really strides itself on loyalty. Um, if they see you being super loyal to the company and always investing in yourself into the company, then I guess they'll wanna like offer you one where you gotta pay a million dollars for it or whatever, I guess. But <laughs> You truly have to prove yourself to the brand and that's possibly for like a few years like they sometimes people be on the waiting list for like 10 years. There have been plenty of women of elite status who have said that they have been on the list for several, several years. Um, once they see you visiting the store often, they might offer you one. They do be having them in the back. I know that for a fact. They be having them in the back, but when you go to the store and ask for one, they're not gonna just offer you one. You have to, sometimes you have to really spend like thousands of dollars. So even if you go in there buying a keychain, um, they'll keep that in mind and they can see your history. And and sometimes they'll look on the little computer and be like oh we actually just got this Birkin bag and would you like to see it I feel like I feel like I have heard that when they offer you a bag you're supposed to take it or else they won't offer you ever 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 again you know it is a collectible and it is um, an investment piece so once you buy the bag um, you can sell it for 
the same price or even more and and some clients they actually ask if they want to place a custom order so this custom order uh, means that you can make the bag any color you want like if you want to make the handle black and you want to make the back of the bag orange and you want to make the side of the bag green and you want to make the front pink you can absolutely do that so they allow you to customize your bag you can you can pick your leather you can pick your size you can pick your hardware and that's just for a select few of customers that they have and these custom bags take up to six to nine months to create and arrive so of course like I said you can go to consignment stores to get the bag um, which is like the real real rebag um, fashion file all of these consignment stores have authentic Hermes bags, which sometimes comes with the box, sometimes it doesn't. Um, sometimes it will come with the authenticity card. Um, it will come with history, it will come with the year that the bag was made, which definitely depends on the price. But you will get these bags at a much higher price than you will at the Hermes store. They're actually way cheaper at the Hermes store. Um, but at consignment stores, they're way more expensive because they're easier for anyone to get their hands on, so they overcharge, you know?